Okay, now we'll move on to the presenters for the evening. And here you have Jim Farrar, who has never been. No, just kidding. Okay, so let's escape this. So what I'm going to teach you guys tonight, or just go over with in timing, because I don't want to go over but about 10 minutes. Now my mouse is dead. While we're waiting, I got a call from out west somewhere about you and about your race and everything. Have you heard anything? No. Okay, they're lying, lying, lying about you. Oh, okay. Yeah, and you know, it's one of these surveys, you know, and everything, and you're hooked up with a bunch of lawyers and this and this and this, you know. And it, it was the gal. What's her name? Uh, Christine. Yeah. yeah. Running against me. It's, it's, it's for her. Okay. So just, just to let you know it. And it's like, Hooked up, hooked up with a bunch of uh, lawyers, huh? You, are you any of you all lawyers? That's called that slander. Yeah. They're scared. Yeah. They're scared. Yes. Yeah. I have had a journey in uh, Cape Girardeau who our supporters have donated to me, if that counts. Does that mean I'm hooked up with attorneys? I, I guess so. I mean, okay. But I will say this real quick. In my, you know, this is important. This is why they're scared. I have received more donations from inside the district than both of my opponents combined. Their money is coming from Jefferson City. There's a difference. So let them bash me. Let them, let them drag me through the mud. When they attack me, they're attacking you. I'm with you. So I'm and they sorry. were trying, she was trying, they were trying, the, the main thing they were trying to do was align her with Trump. Yeah, over and over and over and over. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one freedom of race, so we'll see. All righty. Yes, Jack. Thank you. Don't we need to pass the bucket? Oh, did we not pass? I, okay, we're, if the ushers would please go ahead and start the uh, John Day, if you all would please pass these buckets. Thank you very much. All right, the donations will stay local. Okay, so this is our new website. It's not fully functional yet. But um, uh, I would like for you guys to visit. It's Guardians Info, or I'm sorry, Guardians of Liberty dot info. And so doesn't that look pretty? And then um, as we scroll down here, uh, there's our mission statement. And on the top here is our, that's not correct. This is what we do, our mission statements on the flag. Like I said, we're just learning. So you can sign up for our newsletter right there. And then go up here to the home button. What is that? Hmm. It looks a little different on the phone. There is another link. Oh, up here, home, and then there's links. Check this out, you guys. Looky here. Join these people making a difference. Here you can um, click on any of these links. Uh, we have local Substack. Um, those are some local or uh, commentary from around the state. Uh, Cape Girardeau County. There's Senator Moon's uh, link. City of Cape link. So if you want to know about city council meetings or whatever, click on that link. City of Jackson. Um, Adrian Ross who is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we have the official Missouri website, mo.gov. I'm gonna go over these tonight. Um, come back over here to the other side. There's our YouTube channel and our Rumble channel. Don't click on them just yet because I can't get it figured out. But it's there. <laughs> and we have Informed Health Choice Missouri. Uh, Jen Barker, she spoke here a few weeks ago. Jody Grace has wonderful commentary. And uh, there's our Facebook group. There's the Missouri House. Missouri Revised Statutes, those are the laws that are on the book, just or unjust. So anyway, the purpose of my session tonight is just to kind of go over techie stuff, because I'm a tech pro, <laughs> can't you tell? <laughs> Websites, okay. So the next one I wanna bring, because it's Cape Girardeau County, is this is capecounty.us, simple enough, and this has a whole boatload of information it's not the easiest to navigate through, I'll tell you that. So if you can't find something, I usually just text either Flint Tracy or Kara Clark and say, I can't find this. But um, what I wanna show you tonight is you can click on, if you move on down here, there's some county offices, but not everyone is listed there. And up here, you can click on county offices. And because we have an April election coming up, I'm gonna click on Kara Clark. County Clerk, Election Authority, and look what comes up, vote, vote. And um, what's on my ballot? First off, 
If you're not registered to vote in here, see me afterward and I'll help you do that. What's on my ballot? So let's just click on there. Um, I'll tell you, it's not up today, but I wanna show you so that in the next couple days, you'll be able to look and see what's on your ballot. So right here, it says sample ballot currently unavailable, but how easy it was to get that. So you don't have to wait to come to one of our meetings to find out, oh, Jan, she's gonna have some sample ballots. Yeah, that's our goal, but you can check it right here. And so this has a strike through of this Missouri Voter Outreach Center. Let me click on that anyway. And it takes you directly to the Secretary of State's office. And again, a lot of information there. You can uh, register to vote there. Secretary of State's office, and I'm not even gonna go through all that, but there is so much information about what happens here in Missouri with the election authority and, and everything, okay? So back to katecounty.us, uh, back to other um, Cape County home. Um, if I had time, I really wanted to show you the assessors and I encourage you to check this out, the county assessor, because I guarantee if you haven't asked um, Bob Adams to take the picture of your home down, it's up there for everyone to see. Okay, so I live out in the county and I live up, um, up a lane, so my house is not visible from the road, but guess what? Everyone had a privilege to see my house because this was on there several years ago. And in front of my house was my grandkids' swing set. And you know, so this was what, five or six years ago and, and a lot of the child predators were being exposed and this and that, right? And so I called Bob Adams and I said, my picture is there, I live out in the county. Um, people, this is child predator, what, what, I want my picture down. He says, well, anything that we pay taxes on, we have to have a picture of. Okay, fine, per statute, I get that. But if there's a predator looking for, and they see that online, they travel by my county road, right? Are they gonna, um, do you understand what I'm saying? A lot of concerns. So you can opt out and have your photo taken down, okay? Um, it doesn't need to be up there. They can keep it in their file, in their office, and I guarantee the perverts are not gonna go into their office to find out who has a swing set in their yard. So I just wanna, um, when you roll on down here and keep uh, scrolling down, there's all about your property taxes and everything else, but keep going. We won't get into property tax being theft. Um, there we go, the parcel viewer. And so when you click on this, it takes you to a couple different links. You can put your address in there and well, uh, all the taxes, there's photos, there's all kinds of stuff, all the private information about you. So I encourage you to check that out. Okay, can that's you really, opt out of that? you, you, there's some things you can opt out of, yes, but it's a personal phone call to Bob Adams, who is a great guy, but he's also a big government guy, okay? Um, and just say, I don't wanna be a part of this, okay? So you just have to, and he'll tell you what he can take down and cannot take down, but photos do not need to be up there and shame on anyone who thinks that they can just take photos of you and put it up there. Um, any questions about capecounty.us? There's, there's really a lot of information. I encourage you please just click on it, go back to the home, and then uh, you wanna know salaries. I'm trying to find county salaries, and I know it's there. I was waiting for an email response um, because I did find out, did you know our county commissioners now in 2024? Guess, guess what their salary might be? Going. Not that high. Uh, Cape County salaries um, are, uh, I texted Clint Tracy, 99500 And they got SUVs. And they have SUVs. Black. Anyway, okay, Cape Girardeau County, capecounty.us, check it out. The next I want to bring to you, um, your attention is mo.gov. I don't ever go to this particular website. I, I break it down more, but here you could, if you can't remember, what was that website? You just um, go through here and you can click on legislation, um, government, and then you can click on all of these. But I already have these open, so I'm gonna go up here to Missouri House. And so this brings you to, you know, there's the House side and the Senate side. So a bill has to be passed in the House and the Senate before it can go on to be, um, to the governor's desk, okay? Well, then there's HGRs and, 
Anyway, we're gonna stick to this. Um, so this is the website. If you wanna find out, you can put your address in, you can find out who your legislators are. But right now, because we are in session from January till uh, May, I'm very interested in uh, different house bills. So down here, you could type in a particular bill search. Did you see where that clicked at? You can type in there if you have a particular <laughs> number uh, that you're looking for. But otherwise, you can go up here to legislation, and I'm gonna click on that. Because what I'm most interested in, because I am not a bill reader, although I read a lot of bills. Anybody read bills? It's kind of tough to read bills. <laughs> but uh, some people have a skill for that. I would prefer to listen. And so here we are, and we can come down to, let's see, did I click on? I was listening today. Yes, maybe because they're not in session. The house is in session in the mornings. Oh, maybe it's session, sorry. Yes, okay, so the, here's, here's um, I'm gonna sit down. Here is the bill calendar, right here in the center. And so if we wanted to listen, um, who, they're not currently in session right now, but, um, or in the hearing. Let's just see if one is on. So, second reading. Sometimes they do stay late, but not this late. So these were all on the calendar for today. And you could click on, at any time on this and you could click on them and if they are in the hearing room, uh, you can listen. Um, actually the house has a, a, a video so you can watch live what's happening in Jefferson City. Are you guys awake? Yeah. Is this boring or is this interesting? So um, you, you, you can go through here, you can click on one. Um, and you can listen to it, what's happening, if it's of interest to you. Okay, sorry, but we might have more luck with the Senate. Okay, so that's house.mo.gov. Okay, now we're gonna go to the Senate side. Senate.mo.gov. There's looks a little bit different. So here you go to, there's your senators, different committees, different legislation, uh, media. So we're gonna go to legislation. And you can do this from your phone, it's easier. Some of these are easier from your phone. And you can listen live. Oh. Hearings, there it is. I'm sorry, I don't get on my laptop a lot to do this. So, I'll go here. See, oh, there currently are no hearings in Senate Room 1. Jacob, is there anything going on this evening? Uh, I don't believe so this evening. The 7 Bill 782 is the bill for the, uh, the, the water export of the Senate, and then in the House, it's uh, House Bill 2153, in case anybody wants to look it up later on. Okay, so if you wanted to listen uh, for whatever's going on, the Senate lounge they host stuff, you will click right through here and it'll say, and you can click on it, and all you get is a black background with a line, and it's live, but you don't hear anything. So um, last week was a great week to listen, or was it last week when they filibustered? <laughs> it was great. So anyway, um, that's really what I wanted to show you. Um, Become a junkie and listen and watch. That's the way you're going to learn the most. House.mo.gov, Senate.mo.gov. Yes. Okay, ask Jacob a question. What's the best way to get through to one of our Congress people by mail, uh, by calling them, or by email? E email is very effective, but I, I would call the office and see if their staff is in. That's the most effective. Yeah, email, well, e email, cause one, uh, email, I would say, is better is because it's in writing, and their response is in writing. So that'd be, that'd be helpful for you in the future. And then anytime, that, anytime you can make them put something in writing, it's best. Yes, we'll write Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And we do, um, those of us who have been going for uh, several years, we do have cell phone numbers of a lot. And they'll say, oh, just send me a text. So if there's someone in mind, I have all of our local, uh, everyone who governs our area, um, I have their cell phone numbers. And I have put them out there on Facebook and in our Telegram groups. So. Um, if you want a cell phone number, I'd be happy to give it to you. All right, any other questions? 
Was that interesting? Boring? Borderline. No, nope. borderline. Nobody's asleep. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to pass it on to uh, Sharon Regard, who's going to speak with us about one of our local, wonderful um, things we have going on here in Cape Girardeau. A good thing. Yeah. Yeah, you can run this way. to you a little bit about options for women. Um, I actually took over Jan's job when she quit and Chris has volunteered for lots and lots of years. So there's people here that know a lot about options, but um, I retired from the university and um, then when Jan was quitting, I got a call from options saying, hey, you want a job? And I'm like, well, what is it? Two days a week? Yes, okay. Two days a week gives me something to do. But it was actually kind of a dream come true because I've always wanted to work with moms and their babies. I worked with student athletes before at college, so this is kind of the same thing. Right? <laughs> um, but anyway, um, so with options, one of the things we are pro-life, of course, and we are faith-based and donor supported um, but one of the things the things that we are really our main thrust is just to help families and help the moms and the families and we do all kinds of different things um, <clears throat> when a pregnant mom comes to us um, calls or wants to come in one of the things we do is just talk to her and find out what her um, what her, her plans are you know are you going to keep the baby you know, just, and a lot of them will, you know, will keep it, keep the baby. And then there's some that, you know, they don't know. And then there's some that are just dead set on abortion. And so what we do is we talk to them and we tell them all their options. Even if they talk about abortion, we just tell them, okay, here's what you need to expect. You know, a lot of people think the abortion pill is just easy. You know, it's like a pill, it's gonna happen. Hey, lots of hard things happen when you do that abortion pill. So I, I'm the type of person, tell me what it's gonna be like so I can expect the worst, <laughs> and then hopefully the best will happen. But, um, so the girls are usually re very um, willing to hear what we have to say. Um, they, you know, like, can you help me get, you know, reach somebody and like, no, we don't, we don't, um, we don't give you information. Um, on how to, or where to go and get the abortion or anything like that. We just tell you, if you choose that, here's what could happen. Um, and so when we always, when we talk to them too, we always tell them that, um, can we call you back in a week or so, just to see what you're thinking, if they, you know, if they don't know. Most of them will say yes. And some of them will answer their phone, and most of them will not. If they have already gone ahead and had the abortion, they just kind of try to shut us out there. However, last week, I had one, maybe two weeks ago, one that came about a year ago, maybe a real young girl, and uh, she already had a three-year-old. And she, she said, I just can't do it again right now. Or I think he was probably like, one and a half or two then, because he's three now. But she goes, I just can't do this again. She's living with her mom and her sister who has three kids, you know, a whole bunch of people in their house with kids. And But she came back about, I guess it was last week. And, well, not last week, week before. But anyway, she came back and she said she's pregnant again. And she told me and right off, she was very open. And I knew she had had the abortion, but she's like, I'm gonna keep this one. And so we were, so we got her in class real quick, and she's, you know, um, hopefully she'll get through it. You know, she's determined to keep, I think she's got a better support system now. But um, I could go on and on, but um, basically what we're trying to do is help them make the right choice, um, you know, and giving them all the, you know, options, but just encouraging them that this is life. You know, life begins at conception, and you know, and we talk to them about adoption. Most of them will say, "Well, if I'm going to carry it, I'm going to keep it." You know, they don't realize that 
they're killing it and you know they just but you know here's the other thing that you got to remember is when those girls especially the young ones when they come into our place they are not thinking about a baby they're thinking about themselves they're not you know to them it's just a glob of cells in their mind that it's not a baby yet and that sort of thing and so I tr we you know we try to keep that in mind they're not thinking about themselves that's why we try to be really kind and loving and positive but yet speaking the truth basically in love and um, so um, you know I think we saved a lot of babies we have and you know um, that's a good thing but there's also some that no matter what you say they've already got their mind made up or you know I had one last week that she was in eighth grade her mama brought her in and um, the mom the mom looked like she was the patient she was so young and she's like I mean I bet she wasn't 30 I don't even think she was probably 25 or 26. So I'm thinking, because she didn't want her, she goes, I just don't want her to go through what I've gone through. And her grandma was not wanting her to abort the baby. And um, so, and they're from down south a little bit further. So I referred them to another pregnancy center, but hopefully I asked her if I could call her back and just see, and she said yes. So. We're right in the middle of moving this week. Um, we got a bigger place, which we really needed. And so we're trying to move. You know how it is, move your house. Well, it's moving this whole office of stuff that we have stuffed everywhere. And so we're pretty much done with that. But so, you know, we also do, when the girls come, we have parenting classes, which is our big thrust of just working with them and just trying to teach them how. Some of them have no idea how to take care of a baby, um, or just, just, they just don't know. But really a lot of it is, and I think, you know, Chris can tell you right off, it's, and Jan, that, you know, we just try to get to know them and see where their heart is and what's happening, and you build a relationship with them. And then you, you they're more open, and sometimes they tell you stuff, and you're like, wait a minute, I don't really wanna hear this, but, you know. Um, but they need that, and they find a safe place with each other and with us, and that's our goal, is to create a safe place for them to come, because some of them don't get much of a break um, from kids, and most of them have several little stair steps. And um, let's see, I could go on. I'm trying to think here, but the parenting classes are really good because for one reason, it um, they earn points for diapers and wipes, which means that they come to class, they don't have to ever buy a diaper and wipe. And so that's a big deal yeah. because if you chase, if you look at the prices of diapers these days, they're terrible. And so that is some, uh, sometimes an encouragement for them to come. And even if they're not, if they're a little bit scared, but I think once they come and they get with their group and they bond really quick, don't you guys think? In the group, they, they bond really quick with each other because they're, a lot of them are in the same boat. We also have a uh, beautiful little boutique where they can go in and pick out um, four things out of there every week, and that's beautiful, brand new clothes, um, things, you know, cleaning things, um, things personally for them, candles, some different bath and body stuff, you know, things that they get to pick out for themselves. And so that's another thing that's really, really nice. And we also give them, we are a food bank also, so we always give them a bag of blessings. And a lot of times it's uh, snacky type stuff, but they like that. And uh, if we have paper products, you know, toilet paper and paper towels, we try to put those in there. So that's pretty much, um, can you guys think of anything I'm missing on that other than just, you know, just really trying to make a bond with them. And then one of the other main things that we um, started last, uh, it's been two years now, I guess, is the Releasing Grace which is the um, abortion recovery class that we do. Um, we've been through two or three classes, I can't remember <laughs> exactly. Um, getting ready to start another one here in the next few weeks. Um, but it's pretty cool how that works out because um, we had a lady come, um, it was right during COVID, 
Um, and we were actually closed during that time, except for we were given the girls diapers and wipes and stuff like that. But uh, we got an emergency call that um, there was a lady that had just had an abortion and she was really upset. So the other um, uh, client service director and I went in and talked to her and she was hysterical. And I'm like, okay, we gotta find some help for her. And um, so I found this group out of Kansas City called If Not For Grace. And I called them and talked to them and I wanted to make sure it was a Christian, Bible-believing group that would give her that sort of support. And they said, oh yeah, we can do that. And so actually um, they trained me as a mentee. And so I went through the program with her that summer. And then we went to the retreat and then Fred and I have got been involved in some of their retreats and things like that. Um, done some other courses. Um, so in our each of our classes, we've had a Zoom person from a different part of the state or the country. And so we've opened it up to that. And most of the girls um, <coughs> seem to, you know, you know, if you know anything about grief and all of that kind of stuff, it's a stage, you know, it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. And what we found is most of the time that they have a hard time forgiving themselves, you know, because we really stress that God forgives you, but, you know, you have to ask first. You have to ask for his forgiveness and be truly repentant. And um, most of them are, because that's they, you know that's when they come to us. And most of them, I mean, not most, but mo well, the majority are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Wow. Hmm. And every one that we've had, we've had a 70s, uh, 60s, you know, because it's a burden they carry, because nobody really wants to talk about it. And so they're silent a lot of times because, um, you know, they just carry that burden for so long and then they keep thinking, why can't I find peace? Why can't I find rest? And they begin, to, and it, that always comes back to haunt them. And so finally, by the time they're that age, they're realizing, wait, maybe this has been a problem all these years. Maybe I really do need to deal with it. So we have a really good um, study that we do. Um, it's called Her Choice to Heal, and it's very scriptural. I mean, it is all scriptural. And we love that, but they have some hard work to do. They have to face some of their, you know, past stuff. And um, most of them have been really, uh, I think they've been blessed and have been able to give up some of the, the baggage from the past. And, um, uh, let's see. Anyway, we're getting ready to start that. Does anybody have any questions? I mean, I could go on. Do the men come to the recovery? Not, not the men. We, we are hoping to start that because we've gone to a couple of the ones in Kansas City where they just do men and women separately because, you know, there's so much emotion and you know the men probably aren't going to cry like the ladies maybe i don't know I've, but we've gone to retreats where the men have been there like they've come to support their wives um and they they just in kansas city they've been going for a long time and they just started a men's thing a couple of years ago and so we're hoping that happens somebody else i can get the funding we are funded through um, churches, people, anybody, anybody that's willing, um, you know, individuals. Um, yearly, your yearly dinner. Oh yeah, we have a banquet. We have two fundraisers, and one is a banquet that we have in um, October, and then we have a um, quarter auction, which is coming up March 9th, and it's fun. And um, so you're all, anybody ever been to the quarter one? I know Nancy has and Chris, yeah. It's pretty fun. They have all kinds of beautiful thing, baskets and different things that people make that you can um, uh, bid get bid on. I mean, like, I know somebody that uh, bid on $200 on cinnamon rolls. <laughs> I made it. The food uh, goes crazy. Huh? Yeah, the food is great. I think I paid last year eighty dollars for a, a roll or a homemade bread because 
I decide how much I'm going to spend, and then I think, what do I really want? You know? So um, it's a fun time. So if you're interested, those tickets are going already. People are calling us, and we've been in an uproar for the last two weeks just trying to pack. And we moved on Saturday, so now we're trying to unpack. And um, But it's a blessing because we've needed a bigger space to do more things where we actually started um, – well, a few years ago when I was talk, I, these, I had a whole class full of 13, 14, and 15 year olds. And that was very interesting. Um, and, you know, they had all decided to keep their babies. And one good thing for them is they had support. You know, they had their family supporting. Um, and right now we're trying to start something for older kids. Um, like, because ours usually go up to about two and a half. We don't do childcare. They have to find their own childcare. We tried that. That was not fun. Um, because <laughs> nobody wanted to do it, and our room was about the size of like, know, this, little, this little bitty corner here. And um, so we don't do that anymore. And uh, our classes are only every other week too, so that helps the moms be able to, you know, find out some different childcare. Um, but it's it's really it's really cool because you see these people that you know have thought about and get a lot of students from SEMO, and a lot of them will, you know, decide to keep their baby. We had one couple um, that they were both in school, and what they did is they rearranged their schedule after she was born um, so that he you know they didn't have to get babysitting, and so and they both graduated. Two years ago. So. Wow. so where is your new office going to be? It I knew you'd ask that. On my phone, it's uh, it's on Myra Drive. Do you know where Myra Drive is? Like yeah. Red Cross. Yeah, right by the Red Cross. If you the Commerce Bank on William is that Broadview? William William and Broadview. Broadview. Yeah, William. Yeah, and then uh, Myra Drive. If you turn down that way, opposite Applebee's. And we're just the next, um, and there's like three or four little um, office buildings in there. And we took over Dr. Susan Sheets' office. But the, um, yeah, you should come by, I would say, next week and see how beautiful it is. <laughs> um, it's really pretty. Um, it, when we first walked in, we thought, like, oh, no, because it was for kids, pediatric. These fish everywhere and these bright, bright colors. And we're like, hmm. But it doesn't look like that now. And we have a wonderful friend that's a decorator, and she's taken good care of us, and it's really good. Um, anybody else? Um, so when you have, a, you talk about your classes, and say a, a girl is, you know, a month pregnant, and she decides to keep her baby. So does she come every other week and through the full pregnancy, and do you work with her after the baby's born too? They can stay with us till. See, after, they can bring their babies till they're six months old. And we know that when they turn six months, they start getting cute and then distracting and talking and wanting to move around. So we tell them that from the very beginning so that they can find someone to watch their baby during that time. Um, and then they can stay in that particular program till they're about two and a half or three. I mean, we, we say two and a half, but... Sometimes it's hard to get, let them go. But what we're, one of the things that we're starting to do right now, we've got a class on Monday, every other Monday evening at six o'clock for kids like three to 16. Don't, it's not going over great yet. We've only got three or four. It's uh, not for the kids, it's for the moms. Well, yeah, it's for the moms children. and the children. Yeah, oh no. <laughs> We're trying to stay away from, we love the children, but we don't have, you know. Um, but the ladies that are doing it are really excited about it, and I think it's going to grow. Because, you know, for me, I have one. One of my things was um, I wanted to teach more Bible stuff because I feel like. Um, you know, we have to we have to deal with what's in our own heart. I think for me it was anyway to be a decent parent. I needed to figure some things out. You know, um, so uh, we've talked in one girl, one class I have. Um, we've been together for a long time, and most of them probably should be shoved out of the nest. 
um, just because their babies are a little bit older. But um, we've been doing Bible studies. They told me, one of them said, you know, I'm just starting to date again after she had been with the baby's dad. And um, she goes, but I want to do it right this time. So we've been talking about relationships. And we have a program, or a, um, it's called Bright Course, that we have a lot of um, material on. And so there was one, and I thought, well, let's listen to this. But it's pretty blunt, but it's really good. And I said, and one of the girls said, we want to hear the hard stuff. And I'm like, OK, let's do this. And then I'm thinking, oh, no, I don't want to talk about that. But um, they're, it's good. They're, they're growing, and um, they want to talk about marriage. And they want, to, you know, they want to talk about some of those hard subjects. And so we're doing it. One of the things, Sharon, you also give ultrasounds. Oh, did I not say ultrasounds? <laughs> oh, yes. When, a, when somebody comes in and um, especially we, we um, do the pregnancy test. I forgot about that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, we, we do pregnancy tests. That's the first thing if they come in and they're pregnant and just to make sure. And then we do limited ultrasounds, 7 to 14 weeks. It's just to verify the pregnancy and to make sure it's in the right spot that there's no ectopic pregnancy or anything. Um, and she, you know, she dates it and says, you know, this is how far along you are and stuff. So that's a big, big um, call here. And that's actually how we got started with, the, um, with that. So yeah, that's a big thing. And um, yeah, I don't have a question. I just want to make a comment. Um, I just want to say thank you yes. for what you do. One of the things you hear a lot, uh, people, the, uh, an accusation leveled against pro-life people, you hear people say, well, they only care while the baby's in the womb. They don't care after a baby's born. They don't, they're not pro-women. They don't care about women. And of course, we know that's a lie anyway. But you're an example of that right here. We have that example right here. Um, we can just. Um, step on that lie because you're doing the hard stuff and pouring into people and to babies and to lives. You're not just saying just have the baby and go. You're supporting them and that means so much and uh, you're a representation of the truth and not that lie that's often leveled that keeps people from, you know, sometimes people don't know what to say to that. Well, we know what to say. It's right here. So thank you. Thank you. Um, and I think that's one of the things that and we work um, you know, with Birthright, we work together on certain things, you know, just we have a good relationship with Birthright. We just do different things. And so um, we kind of complement each other. Um, so, um, yeah, we want those girls to feel, you know, I think they feel so much condemnation um, from themselves, but then from other people that are, well, how could you do that? Well, you know, there's some of them that the ones that we see are not those ones you see on TV, like, oh, I've had nine abortions, look at me. They're not that way, most of them. They're, they're, they're humble, they're, they're needing help, they're needing somebody to care about them, and that's what we try to do. Um, would you have any? Uh, we also have married couples come. It's not just for the single mom. Yeah, now yeah, we also have married couples. They can also bring their boyfriends or whoever. <laughs> A um, couple of things that we've done that's really kind of cool is when we did our um, Releasing Grace, our first abortion, um, maybe it's a second, I can't remember. Anyway, we did it, and there was a couple coming, and when we had our retreat, which we had a big retreat in this beautiful mansion in town, and um, when their husbands come with them, you know, they can stay together, and, you know, sleep together, and so I told them, I said, I can't let you sleep together. So you're either going to have to get married or you're going to have to sleep in a different room. And they said, we'll get married. So my husband married on that. And uh, stop shopping. And we have another couple that were, uh, that's in our, our pregnancy class um, on Wednesdays and on Mondays. And uh, Fred's going to marry them on February 25th. So, you know, um, you know, it's it's a good thing to see, and just to, I love it when they bring 
their boyfriends or their husbands because it shows that they do have some support and they need that. And most of them are really good, don't you think? Yeah, they're, most of them are very supportive. And, uh, you know. So it's a good thing. And if you guys ever want to stop by and see what we're doing, just give me a call. So do you have just paid staff? Do you do volunteers? We do volunteers. Yeah, there's, um, yeah, Chris is a volunteer, yeah. Um, there's, um, let's see, four paid staff. So we have an executive director, and then there's three um, client services directors that we're all doing and teaching classes and doing all different things. And then we have one lady actually that just came in that does a lot of the financial stuff. Um, so yeah, but we do volunteers, um, different things. Some of them want to teach classes. Some of them want to just come in and do whatever. Had one lady today. She's, she's been with us for a long time, and she's 84 years old, and she came in and broke down all the boxes and took them to, uh, oh <laughs> and I hate that job. <laughs> and she, she, yeah, she is, she's like, oh, and I'll come back and put water in the fridge, and we're like, you know what? Just, it's okay, because I was, I was, she was huffing and puffing. I'm like, be careful, I we don't, you know. Um, so, you know. There's lots of things to do if you want to help. We just we have more room. Where are the serial killers located nowadays? What? 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 Divorcionists? Oh. oh. <laughs> like Carbondale yeah. has like three of them, I think, over there in um, <coughs> Illinois, <laughs> um, Granite City, those places. And they, you know, girls sometimes will ask, and I'm Saint like, Lewis. I guess. St. Louis is the closest, or you know, because we don't we don't referring for that at all. But there's still one in St. Louis. No, well, across the river, in Granite yeah. City. Well, yeah. well, yeah. Who knows? Medical school up at Washington. Oh yeah, medical. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah, there's a and that this is going to be a big deal during the election season, right. because even Missouri, our sweet Missouri, is trying to. You know, get rid of them up until birth, right. and so. So how do they contact you? They contact me, us by uh, I left some brochures over there. Um, you can call our number. You know, if you weren't interested, call our number. It's we're online. Um, the website. The website. Two of them. It's all on there. <laughs> <laughs> My brain is fried. <laughs> <laughs> but we, I have some options um, and, um, right up there on top of the other thing. Options and releasing grace, which is our abortion recovery, recovery meeting. Options for women cape dot com. Yeah. Okay. There's some up here and that releasing grace information is right here. Yeah, it's the same thing. All right. Get in touch with us. Okay. Who's next? Thank you so much, Sharon. Thank you. Oh, I had a few notes, but I didn't use them. <laughs> Is this your pen? Yes. Thanks. Okay. We've had some great uh, education tonight, haven't we? So we've covered the gamut. We did uh, the House and the Senate with Jan, and then we went faith-based and pro-life uh, with Sharon. And now I'm going to change your track completely and talk about gardening. How many gardeners do I have? Okay, good. Um, I, I served in the Air Force for about 20 years. And during that time, I did no gardening. I lived on base housing mostly. I didn't really have the time or the inclination to garden. However, um, God has a sense of humor. And soon after I retired, I just felt like I needed to plant a garden. And so I started planting gardens and they would die. And I would plant a garden and the bugs would eat it all. And I would plant a garden and my tomatoes would rot. Um, and I just could not figure it out. Um, but you know what? They say that um, some of our biggest challenges come from guys like this. 
Tomato yes. hornworm. How many have seen tomato hornworm on there? Yep, yep. We went on vacation one year, and when I came back, all my tomato plants were stripped. I didn't have a single leaf left on any tomato plant. So, Albert Einstein says that if you keep doing things over and over and expect different results, that's insanity. And that was me. Until I learned about a man named Jacob Mitleider. Now, this man has changed my opinion of gardening. And it was just at the right time when our country was just changing. All of a sudden, we couldn't go to the store and buy what we needed. The supply chains were breaking down. And I realized I needed to do something different. So let me tell you a little bit about uh, Jacob Mitleider. And then I'm going to tell you what his method includes. So he was a farm boy, but he hated it. So he went to be a baker. And he was good at it, but didn't really work out. The company that he worked for uh, closed down. And so God turned him back to plants. And he opened a place called Mitt's Nurseries in Loma Linda, California, of all places. Um, and he was doing really great, and he was working with some people at Loma Linda University. And they um, were talking about some teams that were, they were taking into uh, underdeveloped nations and teaching them about gardening. The challenge was they were teaching them about gardening in the United States, where you say, okay, well, just put this in your soil, just fix this, just buy that. These people didn't have those kind of resources. And so Jacob Mitleider told the, the academics at Loma Linda University, hey, um, that really doesn't apply. Um, I think we probably should take a different route. And they said, okay, why don't you go ahead and do that? <laughs> and so he did. And he went around to um, do all kinds of research and he went around to 27 different countries and he taught them his method. This is what their sweet potatoes looked like in New Guinea uh, before they met Jacob Mitleider. This is what they looked like after. This is what the tomato plants looked like in Zimbabwe before Jacob Mitleider. And this is what they looked like after. This is one of uh, Jacob Mitleider's students, and this is what his garden looked like in Africa before, and this is what his garden looked like after. One of the things that uh, Jacob Mitleider taught was you can garden anywhere. If you live in the city, if you live in the country, it doesn't matter. And so some of his projects he did like in Okinawa where they put uh, grow boxes on the roofs because they couldn't they didn't have any land uh, for a lot of people they put them in parking lots this is a study that they did that showed the difference between the results for mitleider gardening method and others so on the left is the mitleider um, garden and in the middle is with typical fertilizer the 16 16 16 fertilizer and on the right is an organic garden. Oh my we don't have trouble this bad, but this is the kind of trouble that they were dealing with uh, in Africa. So that kind of gave me the creeps, but I thought that. <laughs> Jacob Mitleider worked his entire life on this. He did research, he has published a lot of things. Uh, when he got so he couldn't do it anymore, he turned his entire set of resources over to a man named Jim Kennard. Jim Kennard is the one that's running the nonprofit organization now. It's called Food for Everyone, or the commercial side is growfood.com, and I'll have a slide for you to look at that. Um, but basically, the Mitleider gardening method, I love it because it has an easy to follow plan and you can be successful anywhere. And that's what I needed after all those failures as a gardener. 
So these are some of the questions that they ask you. Do you want to produce really high quality vegetables and fruit? Do you want to conserve water? Um, do you want less weed trouble? I mean, it's just like a gardener's dream, right? You look at it and you say, how could that be possible? So these are the things that are different uh, about the Mitlider gardening method than traditional gardening. They tell you you can plant a spring, a summer, and a fall garden because different plants are happy in different temperatures. So in the spring, you plant your really cool weather plants, lettuce and broccoli and things like that. Uh, then you go into the summer, you go into the fall in the same garden. Uh, they also teach you to eat the secondary parts of the plant. So when your plant is growing leaves and it hasn't produced fruit yet, whether it's uh, squash, for instance, um, you can eat those little, some of those little leaves as salad. So that is part of his concept to feed, to feed people. Um, he, he has proven that you could feed a family of four on 1 20th of an acre. That's not very much land. Now, this system is a little bit overwhelming at first, right? So I started with just a little four by four box. You know, so I'm gonna show you what the possible is, but that doesn't mean that you start with the big, the big deal. The uh, book that they publish is called uh, the <clears throat> Mitlider Gardening Course. And everything is in there. It's step by step, super, super easy. This is the plan that they have made out for your early spring garden, your uh, late spring and summer garden, and your fall garden. It tells you how many plants to plant, tells you how many pounds of uh, groceries you're gonna get. The garden layout is another thing that's really unique to, uh, to Midlighter. You'll notice that there are 18 inch beds and then there's three and a half feet in between those beds. And there's a five foot perimeter, just plain dirt. No mulch, no grass, nothing. And that is to keep the weeds away and that is to keep the pests away. So that's very important. The beds that he teaches about are two types. One is a soil bed, so if you wanna put it right in your ground, and it doesn't have to be as long as they do it. They do 30 foot beds, 18 inches wide. Um, and they do that because it's easy to reach into. And that's how far the water can effectively flow. But you can also do grow boxes. Um, and he talks about doing the soil as far as sawdust and sand. Because remember, he was teaching people in underdeveloped nations how to garden, and they didn't have good soil. So his whole concept is based on the nutrients that the plants need, and there's 16 of them. One of the other things that he talks about is vertical gardening. Now, vertical gardening is, you know, a lot of times you hear things just the typical, like the green beans or things that are on a vine. Well, uh, he does tomatoes vertically and prunes them, and then you can see the kind of uh, produce that's coming out of that. Uh, the plants are planted between two and nine inches apart, so you really save a lot of space. But the reason you can do that is because of the uh, minerals that he puts together that you put into your fertilizer. He did a lot of research, and as I said, uh, there are 16 nutrients. There's the macronutrients, the micronutrients, and the trace nutrients. But it's kind of like the weak link in the chain. If you are missing any one of those, then that's why our plants always look like they have something wrong with them, because they're probably missing maybe one or more of those, of those nutrients. Uh, he went into a lot of detail about no matter 
uh, how the soil is fertilized, whether it's compost, organic matter, or fertilizer from a bag, the elements used by the plants are the same. Watering is another thing that's unique in the way that he does it. He really uh, focuses on watering at the roots. Don't sprinkle your garden, causes a lot of fungus, causes a lot of uh, bugs, uh, diseases. Early in the morning is best not soggy, keep it moist. If you see a plant that's wilting, it's already starting to die. So get that plant some water. He does two different ways of watering. One is manual and one is uh, automatic. This last year was the first time I really went into the real Jacob Mitleider gardening because I actually built the water system. Well, my husband helped me build the water system. But um, anyway, it's just PVC pipe and you just drill some holes in it and you put it along your garden. Now I put a timer on my hose, on my, uh, uh, hose and then the hose goes down and I just set it for 10 minutes and it waters my garden for 10 minutes every morning and that's it. So it, it's very effective because you don't waste water and your plants are really, really happy all the time. They don't go through that up and down of, of starting to die, especially in our heat here in Missouri. This is what the watering system looks like. Um, like I said, it's uh, 18 inch uh, beds. Now if you do a, a manual watering system, all they have you do is put a, a hose at the end of your bed with a towel so that the water doesn't dig a hole in your, in your bed and then wait till it flows all the way to the end of your bed. Um, you don't have to do 30 foot beds, you can do shorter. Uh, I started with my garden on my patio in five gallon buckets. So, it, which is a long way from this, but my tomatoes did great, everything uh, really the first thing I would do is get those nutrients, the Mitleider Magic nutrients, and uh, that's really the most important thing. Pest control, very tough, but uh, he lays that out for you. Uh, first of all, eliminate the weeds because the weeds are the bug hotels, and all that does is cause problems, takes uh, food and and nutrients and water away from your plants. This is what got me. Just by eliminating all weeds, garden crops can be increased 100 to 600%. I thought, wow, that's, if you can give me one thing like that. Basically, as far as uh, getting rid of pests, he's very big on making sure that the beneficial insects uh, live and are not killed, and you, spray or dust about every seven to 10 days. Uh, one of the things that he recommends is diatomaceous earth, which is very safe and uh, not harmful at all, but you put that in a little circle around your plants and that will stop a lot of the bugs from crawling up onto your plants or um, get rid of the aphids on your uh, leaves, like your eggplant or things like that. So these are the big, these are the big concepts uh, that I want you to go away with. Prevention is uh, worth a pound of cure. The surest way to minimize the insects is prevention. So get rid of those weeds. Prune your plants. Don't let any leaves on the ground. Get rid of all the dead leaves. And um, a lot of the, a lot of the plants he recommends you actually pruning the suckers off. So like tomatoes, eggplant. Uh, cucumbers to make sure that most of the energy goes to the fruit or the vegetables. Protect the beneficial insects, we talked about that. So spraying after uh, the sun has gone down, not dark, but you know, after the bees have gone, gone to bed for the night. Feed the plants properly and be in your garden daily because you'll learn what's changed when those bugs start showing up. 
Okay, so how much time will it take? Now, this is depends on your size of your garden. If you got a small one and you you don't start with much, which I would re recommend starting very small, but you just feed them once a week. Just sprinkle the fertilizer mix. The fertilizer mix is uh, you buy the just a little envelope and then you combine it with uh, fertilizer and Epsom salts. And then you just sprinkle that on the, the plants each week. These are the hours that it would take for you uh, if you were gonna do the entire 1 20th of an acre, which is 11 30 foot beds. So, you know, I have three beds at my house and I'm, I feel like I'm doing a lot, but, um, <laughs> You know, maybe next year I'll be a little bit more crazy. I don't know. So this is our first real mint lighter garden when we did it last year. And uh, that's all our three beds uh, laid out with the stakes and the uh, 18 inches. This is our garden in the middle of the season. And you can see the, you think that the three and a half feet aisles are too much uh it's not you can't after a while you can't walk through it because the plants get so big and you have so many uh so much produce coming out you just can't imagine they say that it's about four times the yield uh, of a traditional garden we're in uh mint lighter gardener training at my house this is my granddaughter clara and uh so she's she's all about uh getting out there in the in the garden. These are the resources that I would recommend you check out if you're interested. Growfood.com is the actual website. That course book uh, is $25. It's well worth it. You can get it digitally, digitally or you can get it in print. Number two is the natural mineral fertilizer mix. Even if you don't go for the book and you just have a garden and you just want to increase your yield, that's what I would do. Just just order, uh, you get two, two envelopes for uh, $15.95, and you mix it with the fertilizer and the Epsom salts, and you would be amazed at, and that's how I started, because the other stuff was too overwhelming for me, um, and it's worth, it's worth starting. <clears throat> if you're interested in jumping right in, they have a mint lighter boot camp, there's one coming up April 14th to the 20th, and they are up in Kidder, Missouri, which is outside of Kansas City. So I went to that uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, it is extensive. It is extensive. They, have, they start at 6 o'clock in the morning. They go to 8 o'clock at night. Now, you don't have to do all that, but it is, I mean, academics, then they have gardens out there, and you go out and you do some of the beds, and you do the pruning, and you do all these things so that you can, it's really hands-on. And then you go into the workshop and you build some of the things that are helpful, um, like they have a, a Kenyan hoe head that they say is the best you could ever get and for getting weeds out of your garden. Um, and different tools, a level for your garden, and you go into that shop and, and you pay for the materials and they're there to show you how to do it. So it really is an impressive boot camp, uh, but you're exhausted by the time you finish. Just want you to know. <laughs> so that's a quick and dirty on the mitt lighter gardening method. Um, I'll just open it up for questions or comments. Can you go back to the first, first slide? The first slide yeah, of the presentation. Yeah, just the other one behind that. Or yeah, the one behind that. One. <laughs> it was informational. Informational. What what kind of information? The three sources: uh, the book and the. Oh. Yeah, that one. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Questions? How do you keep the weeds out like that? So um, first you clear, clear it all so it's just dirt. And then you 
go out every day and when you see a little when you see a little plant popping up you have the hoe and you just cut it off just cut it off cut it off cut it off um, the main thing is just walking through every day and don't let it get away from you You, you can actually use this on anything. They actually uh, talk about doing it for your lawn as well. And yes, you can use it uh, for your flowers also. For the fertilizer mix? Mm -hmm. Yes. So Anybody? can you talk about, um, her strawberry plants were amazing, <laughs> and her tomato plants, if you would just add to that, I was kind of like when I met Darcy last year and she showed me her garden and I'm like, oh, I've been doing this for a long time. She had a yield, I was so embarrassed. So <laughs> talk about how you pruned your tomato plants and how you started off with the pool. And so I tried to expand my garden on the patio so I put a kid's plastic pool out there and I filled it with dirt and I planted all my strawberry plants in there and I planted my Sweet potatoes in there. Sweet potatoes don't work in there because the vines go out and they're looking for more dirt to plant, to dig, dig into. So I had like four or five sweet potatoes that were this big. Wow. All the energy went into that, so don't do that. Um, the tomatoes, you do the vertical gardening and so you uh, put wire across the top. I've got it under my deck. And then you put baling twine and as the tomatoes grow, you let them only have one main stem. You uh, pluck off all the suckers and you bring that uh, baling twine around it until they will be up, well, as far as I can reach, probably nine or 10 feet tall. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then when you get to the top, then you cut the growing tip off and all the energy at the end of the season goes into ripen the rest of the fruit. Um, but the tomatoes just, I mean, just they were just everywhere, especially the cherry tomatoes, which are easier to grow anyway. So they were just, uh, I was just giving them away, you know, yeah. so. Who else, anybody else? Do you have anything growing in your garden right, do you have anything growing in your garden right now? And then do you use cover crops? I do not use cover crops. Um, I do not have anything growing in my garden right now. I pulled all the old stuff out. Um, I do have trouble with all the tomato tomatoes replanting. You know, they're, they're, they're starting to come up already. Um, but I'm just getting ready to do the spring garden. So it's just about time to get out there and get ready to start, you know, the cold weather crops. So. I'll put a, I'll dig up and I'll put a pre-planting mix in there, and then I will plant. Um, now, one of the things I haven't gotten into with the Mitlighter gardening method is growing seedlings, and uh, that is another whole piece of it, but really important because then you know where your plants are coming from, and you can grow them early enough so that they're really strong and ready to plant as soon as the the weather's warm enough. So. Uh, composting. Yeah, I do not do composting, um, but that's only because I haven't, you know, expanded into that. Uh, Jacob Mitleider does not cover composting um, because everything is included in that 16 nutrients. So all that's all the plants need. Tell us about your strawberries. <laughs> oh, my strawberries. So uh, it was the first year, and usually you don't get much on the strawberries but we got a whole bunch of strawberries and they were beautiful and bright red and um, the only problem was my granddaughter went out and ate the crop every time we went out there so <laughs> have another question I, I was wondering Sorry. you mentioned container gardening on your patio mm -hmm. did you start with the mix is that what you said when you so if I was going to do that, I'd want to get the, that's the mineral, and mix it with Epsom salts and fertilizer. That's salt. right. Thank that's you. right. If you're not doing anything okay. else and you just want to improve the garden that you have right now, that's what I would do is, is buy that natural mineral mix 
and you mix it with uh, fertilizer and Epsom salts. And then once a week, you just sprinkle one ounce on your per foot on your plants. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is not about this particular method. I'm not a gardener at all. But here's my question about gardening in general for all you people who are. I'm a wimp, so I gotta ask, do, does this attract snakes? That's what I want to know. I don't even go in my backyard for that reason. Not that I, I'll open not it to all of you. I've never had a snake in my garden, or I've never seen one. Only if you have brush. Uh -huh. If you have a lot of grass. If you have brush, or if you have like oh, so wooded. Oh, it's high, but I've never. I mean, I crawl around in my garden. I pull, I pull weeds on my hands and knees. So. I don't have any snakes. But if you keep brush nearby, I'll get in there. And, because yeah. I had some boards one time. If you have mice, you're going to have snakes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you said you, you do your tomatoes under your deck. What about light? Does it get enough sunlight there? Yes, I put it on the very edge so um, the sun comes on the, right side. on the correct side. Okay. And uh, yeah, there's plenty. So in my containers, I did uh, cucumbers on the vertical, I did eggplant, tomatoes, dill, uh, sweet meat squash, which was a new thing uh, for me. Um, but there's all kinds that you can do vertically that you wouldn't normally, but you just have to train it and use that baling twine to hold the plant up. Some vegetables require different root deep, like kohlrabis. So how do they do that in the boxes? Uh, so they haven't um, found that there's any problem with the, with the depth of the boxes. So they, they, have, um, they have the box, which I want to say it's only eight to 10 inches deep. It's not, it's not really deep. But see, all the all the nutrients are are there for it, and then and then they spread <coughs> this way instead of, you know, straight down. And, and Darcy's garden is in a subdivision. I mean, it's a small. You know, it's not like she's. <clears throat> yeah, it, I mean, it's very possible when you yep. can garden yep. in the city. It, I yep. am so impressed. Now I have another question. The sawdust sand. So, what do you recommend, like, container garden to use for dirt? I mean, would you want to use all this in sand, or? I never have. Okay. Uh, I just use, I just go and get the cheapest topsoil wow. available at the store. <laughs> but, yeah, because, I mean, I thought, well, sawdust and sand, that doesn't have any nutrients in it, so why should I spend a bunch of money on the soil if I'm going to spend the money on the nutrients that I'm going to give the plants what they need and it's work it works great so you can do it in your in your dirt like here um, or you can do it in your you know, five gallon buckets or I, I go to a goodwill and get the tubs the plastic tubs that don't have any tops on them that they sell for a dollar 95 and I put those in my patio <laughs> what about sawdust can you go to the sawmill or what type of sawdust does it have to be aged it, it doesn't have to be aged, but it can't be walnut uh, because that will Most be of it's oak toxic. It's cut here in the area. Yeah, yeah, and that's okay. The key is to uh, what size shavings you're getting. Mm -hmm. um, and the same with the sand. The sand is, it's important that you use cement sand instead of uh, like playground sand or you don't want to use that. So, but this, this book right here, has every single step in it. And it's step by step. It doesn't skip anything. And there's all kinds of pictures in here. And then they have, they do have a Facebook page. I'm not a Facebook person, but um, they do have a Facebook page and the, the people who are administering the nonprofit monitor that so you can ask them questions and they are very detailed about what you should do. Very helpful. So. Are they particular about the sand? Can it be any type of sand? Because we got a huge sand line here. 
and they sell that white sand, the white sand goes to the river, but they have other mm -hmm. sand that's kind of a dark in color that they just pile up, that they almost give it away free. Yeah, they're particular about the sand only in the uh, coarseness of okay. it. Mm -hmm. So any fine sand would be fine? Well, you don't want it too fine, it's the cement sand, not the really fine, yeah. but the, yeah. All right, wow, that was great information, great information.